If you have a voice that is naturally soft, I wanna give you some tips today on how you can sound the best you possibly can. Hi and welcome to today's video. If you don't know me yet, my name is Freya Casey, professional singer and vocal coach, and I would like to share my knowledge with you. Let me just tell you that I'm someone who has never really had an extremely loud voice. When I was younger, when I was in school, I was always a really good singer, but I was never chosen for solos just because of the fact that, you know, I didn't stick out. I adapted really well and I just blended in. I really adapted to what I heard and I just did whatever I heard around me. I did, of course, strengthen my voice and that is the good news. The good news is even if maybe now you don't have a loud voice at all and your voice is more on the soft side, there is a lot of potential to grow as you develop more stamina, better technique, better resonance. But having said that, let's just talk about how your voice is right now. If it is more on the soft side, and maybe you're not a natural belter, and that is not your strength, I want you to really think about the fact that it's not better to have a louder voice. It's not better to have a softer voice. It's not better to have a higher voice. And it's not better to have a lower voice. The best thing that can happen to you is that you have your personal, very unique voice and you embrace it. Like everyone has a different looking body. Some people have long arms, shorter arms, smaller wrists, larger wrists, heavy boned, or very petite. It really depends. And of course you can tweak a lot, but the way you were born is just the way you were born and that's genetic. And I don't want you to struggle against something that is just naturally you. And so your voice, if you are more on the soft side, there are many singers who don't have those huge, big voices, but who have beautiful voices. And I want you to think about singing beautifully. One word of caution, I know one of the problems you may have is when you sing together with a pianist or with a guitarist or a band, even those people who don't have loud voices struggle because of the fact that those instrumentalists have instruments that are naturally so much louder than the human voice. They have so much more potential to be loud just because of the way they're built. Think of a piano. This is not a grand piano. This is just a regular upright piano, but the strings are huge, gigantic in comparison to the size of my vocal folds. And although I can produce very loud high pitches, that potential in my voice to constantly sing loud over long periods of time is just not the same as it would be in an instrument such as this one. And good musicians that you will sing with, good musicians aren't all about well, if you are a loud singer, then you must be a good singer because it's all about being louder. It is not. It is absolutely not about being able to be louder. And it should never be the goal to have a singer who's louder because loud doesn't mean it's musical or it's beautiful. So you should always teach your musicians who may not be singers themselves, you know, teach them that it's not about singing loud, but it's about having the most beautiful voice color. And I can sing loud if I sang a ballad and I didn't have a microphone and I sang with just a piano. literally fighting against what the piano is doing but it sounds much more beautiful and in character of the song and I know I use this song a lot to demonstrate but some say love it is a river that drowns the tender reed it's all about beautiful voice color and the instruments should always reflect what the words are saying and what you're trying to do. So, but here are some tips for you as someone who just naturally has a soft voice. Do what you're best at. Sing in the part of your voice where you have the best brilliance and you have to tweak 
resonance. Beauty best comes out when you open up your resonating spaces, meaning don't close up the throat, have a nice open throat, have nice open vowels, good enunciation. It makes a big difference between some say love, it is a weaver that drowns the tender weed. It's such a difference between this where I have a very closed throat and very nasal sound and nice open throat so I get all the overtones. It's really about lifting the soft palate having the right amount of vocal cord closure, being very aware of all the vowels and consonants that I'm shaping. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. See, having good breathing, having the brilliance in your voice. I can even do this with my talking voice. I can either talk like this and I try to be strong in my voice, but maybe it doesn't sound beautiful and pleasant, or I can try to sound more warm and try to adjust my voice color to where everything is just more open, more resonant, more bright overtones, so do what you are really good at. It's very important. What's also very important is that you take nice deep breaths because if you don't take deep breaths, you don't have any substance or strength. Remember, no tone without breath. If the air isn't moving, then there is no vibration on the vocal cords. So you have to have air moving in first of all so you can have your lungs filled and then you have to have the air moving outward through the vocal cords and it needs a specific amount of velocity and pressure and compression. So expanding the ribs and having some level of compression so that you don't have to push harder here on your vocal cords, but really take the pressure of the, your vocal cords and work much harder from your core, from your support, and from creating compression and that subglottal pressure. It's that pressure that you create by using the muscles around your lungs in order to control how fast you release the air. And that's how you can control a lot of how much power you have in your voice and you can actually add a lot of power. So when I have very loose um, vocal cord closure paired with not compressed air, but just, just pushing against my vocal cords by just pushing it out, not controlling with my muscles how much air is coming out, not economizing, then some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender I mean, I might, I might get a little louder, but it's absolutely oh, gonna be straining for my vocal cords. So please, if you have a soft voice, continually work on good technique. It's even more important to have great technique. So experiment with your vowels. Some say love, some say love, some say love, some say love. Love, 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 it is, it is, it is, it is a river, 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 river. See how the way I color my voice has such a huge, tremendous effect on the way it sounds and how beautiful it can be. So please keep all these things in mind. I have tons of videos about space, about opening up the voice. Please check them out because it is so extremely important that you focus on your technique and not on pushing harder without really thinking about 
how am I gonna do this in a healthy way to where I can sing for hours and hours and years to come in a sustainable way. Thank you so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and join my free Facebook group at Master Your Voice on Facebook. Also, if you have not read my book and you need some motivation and some more advice, you can get it as audiobook or as a Kindle or as a physical book on Amazon. Check out the link below. Have a most wonderful week and until next time, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing. I must be strong to carry